It's Friday, February 1st, 2019, and time for your Barbados Today Morning News Update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. The Sugar Industries and Staff Association has vowed to take action over the retrenchment of workers at the Barbados Agricultural Management Company, BAMC Limited. President Edwin O'Neill has accused the BAMC of disrespect and displaying unacceptable behavior. In the interim, O'Neill says the association is willing to sit down to have the matter resolved. I am not going to be guilty of what I've accused the other side of. I am still going to follow process. I have alerted the Chief Labor Officer as to how we feel about the matter. And, um, and like I said, I am going to exhaust all legal, lawful, time-honored, and accepted practices. But there comes a time when that process is exhausted. I have to be responsible, not only as the leader of CESA, but also as the president of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations. And the violence. Minister of Tourism Kerry Simmons is telling Barbadians that the spate of killings is not only bad for the country, but it could hurt the island's bread and butter tourism industry. That industry is currently experiencing another bumper winter season. Simmons says the gunplay and other violence incidents threatens to compromise the image. He welcomed the announcement by Prime Minister Mia Motley that, that a plan is being put in place to curb the violence, including having close to 100 soldiers work alongside the Royal Barbados Police Force. Whenever we have a shooting incident, we compromise the image of the country and do untold potential damage to what, what, what we could probably be achieving financially. It, it disturbed me deeply that those things were happening while we had 6,500 English guests in the island. I mean, there was, in the course of the last two weeks, not, it wasn't possible to get a hotel room in Barbados. Um, it is a good thing that you can have that level of occupancy, but the reality is all of those people were here on the island at the time when that lawlessness was taking place in Barbados. So that I, I, I want people to be a lot more you know, conscious and aware of the, 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 the consequences of that kind of activity and the foolishness that they do um, hurts people, um, innocent people who are working hard to try to get this country back on its feet again. A team of experts has been set up to examine China's Belt and Road Initiative as an alternative source of concessionary financing. The initiative involves infrastructural development and investments in Europe, Asia, Africa and the Caribbean. The group is being led by academics from the University of the West Indies, with the focal point being the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies, Salesis, at Cave Hill. But even as they consider the pros and cons, Former Prime Minister Owen Arthur says it's not acceptable that countries that access concessionary financing from the Asian country have to absorb a significant amount of Chinese labor on associated projects. China's loans and investment abroad seem as a rule to be designed as far as possible to be implemented to generate employment opportunities for Chinese workers. And this obtains even in instances where the beneficiary countries are faced with high levels of unemployment. This is not acceptable, nor is it sustainable as a basis of a mutually beneficial relationship between China and its partners. Barbados is among countries down to benefit from 30.7 million euros to strengthen disaster risk management. The funds are being made available through agreements signed between the EU and the World Bank Global Facility for Disaster Reduction and Recovery. Aside from Barbados, the Caribbean Region Resilience Building Facility will benefit a number of other regional states, among them Antigua and Barbuda, Bahamas, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, and Haiti. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from our regional neighbors, Guyana's Attorney General has given notice he will appeal to yesterday's ruling, which found that the motion of no confidence passed in the National Assembly last December that brought down the David Granger-led coalition government is valid. The ruling by the acting Chief Justice paves the way for fresh regional and general elections to be held later this year. Under the Guyana's constitution, elections must take place within 90 days of the motion of no confidence being passed. The Chief Justice also said that anyone who holds dual citizenship should not and could not be a member of the Guyana Parliament. On to international news, Saudi Arabia has ended a sprawling crackdown on corruption ordered by the Crown Prince. It says more than 106 billion U.S. dollars have been recovered through settlements with scores of senior princes, ministers and top businessmen. This was a prison, not a regular prison with cells and bars, but a luxury hotel used to detain from November 2017 some of Saudi Arabia's most powerful men, ministers, princes, and this man, Saudi Arabia's richest businessman, Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, who owns shares of Citigroup, the Four Seasons, Twitter, and Euro Disney. Like the other detainees, he's accused of corruption. There's some, there are no charges. Okay. There's just some discussions between me and the government, you know, I mean, but rest assured that uh, this, is, uh, this is a clean operation that we have, and uh, we're just in discussion with the government on, on various matters. Days later, the prince settled with authorities. The royal court says 87 people settled like him, and all of them confessed. Figures released as Saudi Arabia ends its so-called clean hands campaign. 64 people will be prosecuted. And the figure that Saudi Arabia pushes forward in its graphics, the amount collected through settlements, $106 billion. But critics believe since day one, the operation was a show of force from Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman rather than a fight on corruption. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbedastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay and supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.